Hello everybody, this is JD, and today I'm going to talk to you about something, and I want you to listen very closely, because we're going to talk about socialism. Now remember I told you we have a republic, not a democracy, a republic. As a republic, we're supposed to have representatives that go to Congress and represent us. Unfortunately, they are political party monsters. They go to Congress and represent the political parties, not the people. They really don't even care about the people. But we're not going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about socialism. Socialism. Okay. Think about what socialism actually is. You have to think. It's where the government kind of equally distributes everything among everybody. And you have to, you know, you receive from the government. To have socialism work in any society, everybody has to participate. That means no welfare. Now, where is there a society that socialism does work. China. If you don't want to work or you have some kind of disability or you are this or you are that, guess where you go? It's called labor camps. Everybody participates in the society. No ands, no ifs, no buts. That is socialism. All these people who are getting assistance through welfare for generations would all be thrown and sent to labor camps if we were in China. When socialism cannot work at all, when over 25% of the population of the society is living off of government subsidies. Not just entitlements, government retirement, government disabilities, and all this stuff. If over 25%, socialism won't work. But why does it work in our republic? Because we do not have a socialist. We have what is called a free enterprise society. People make enough money to offset the drain through their taxes of these people who are on welfare, who are the freeloaders to our society. Of anybody in this nation who should be against socialism should be the people who are on welfare or state assistance or federal assistance. The reason is because that cannot exist if we have a socialized government and you will be the first ones taken off. You won't get more. You're going to get a lot less. Think about that. Socialism works that way. The only way. Now you take a look at China's society. They have a socialist society. And look how well it's doing. And you go to China. If you can't work, they'll find you a job. They'll put you to work. You're not going to like the job most likely. Especially if you're not skilled or if you're lazy and you don't want to go out there and work. They'll find you a job. they got a lot of manual labor they use all throughout the country. I'm not saying anything negative about China. I understand you. That is their society. That is their country. And it is up to them to choose the type of government they want. But if you want to understand socialism, you have to understand the grounds that it works on. You get too many of these students in colleges that study communism and socialism and say, Oh, it's such a great idea. Oh, we got to do it. It is terrific. It is wonderful. But they never looked on the other side of the coin. The part where the undereducated the under-talented, the under-skilled are thrown into labor camps because a socialist government cannot support a non-productive person at all. The 
only type of social governments that can support nonproductive people have totally failed. Carrying the dead weight eats up the society in which socialism exists. Dead weight does not promote growth and hinders. Therefore, socialism will not permit it. Now, what type of government do we have? Why do we have socialism in our government? We have a republic. And we can choose something from any type of system there is because it's a republic. We could choose some from democracy. We could choose some from communism, socialism, any type. But we must always remember to walk that very, excuse me, fine line. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning and I've been up since like 6 yesterday morning. And we have to understand that that fine line cannot be lost. Because once it does become lost, we lose what we are. If we get to where we have to vote for everything, whether and eliminate Congress, it becomes a democracy. If it gets to where we have too many people, too much socialism, we will lose the republic and become a socialist society. We can have some of all, but we cannot major in any one. We must understand we are a republic, and as a republic, we will not falter. Unfortunately, our congressmen and senators in Washington, D.C. believe that they are Republicans first and Democrats first and have no idea about the American that they're supposed to be representing. Maybe they're spending too long in Washington and not enough time at home. Maybe we need to send them home a little more each year and in Washington a lot less. That's something we might have to think about in the upcoming years. And I've got a few people who talked about term limits. And I tell them, you got term limits. It's called the vote. And they say, oh, but they're not. And it's not working because you all out there say, well, it's not my senator. It's not my congressman. It's the other guy. It is your congressman. It is your senator. They are the other guys. When they stand before you and say the Republican or Democrat Party represents you, it doesn't. It only represents itself. Do you want a socialist government? We can have labor camps to send all these people who sit around doing nothing. And your portion of the government will be by your skills. Or we could continue with this free enterprise, this great republic that our forefathers and the Constitution has established. As far as I'm concerned, the Constitution and the free enterprise sounds a lot better. And I think we ought to start considering that and get these political parties out of our Congress, both the House and the Senate. Thank you. This is J.D.